Inevitably, it's going to be a long video, so I'm gonna forewarn you now. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a chatty video, so I'm going to try and not make this too long, but I have a feeling that inevitably it's going to be a long video, so I'm going to forewarn you now, um, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, get some wine, whatever is your choice of beverage, or get some snacks. If you do like these sort of videos, which includes all things about luxury, then please hit that subscribe button below if you aren't already subscribed. Now, okay, so today's video is going to be about my Hermes journey. And to kind of summarize what it is about, because it's not just specifically my Hermes, my, Hermes, my Hermes journey with the store, it's also my journey when it comes to buying Hermes in the resale market, pre-loved market. Um, when I bought my first Hermes and the backstory behind going ahead and buying my first Hermes and the bags that I've bought and resold and why. I'm, I'm going to do my very best to sort of give a timeline and talk about, um, you know, all things around the purchase and, you know, why I went for it or why I sold it. And then when it comes to my Hermes journey as well with the store, that is also a part of the process too. My first note is that I started to fall in love with the brand around about the end of 2015. So basically with my luxury journey, I used to pretty much exclusively own Louis Vuitton mostly. Um, I'd gone through some Chanel bags, like pre-loved vintage ones, like bought them and sold them. I had some other bags like Prada, Celine and all that. So I did have um, like a fairly versatile luxury collection. End of 2015, which is now like, you know, four, four years ago sort of thing. I was at the age of about 26, 27, something like that. Um, and I think I just had an itch for something different, something different in the luxury world where I kind of felt a bit bored with my choice of bags. Like, it, yeah, just had that little itch. And I don't even know, I think I stumbled across, like I knew about Hermes already, but I stumbled across it more and what bags they have and all that sort of thing by the purse forum. Like I was on the purse forum for like all the other brands, Louis Vuitton, Celine, Chanel and all that. And then obviously there was a Hermes section and I decided to click into that, look at some pictures, read people's thoughts about the brand and all the things they love. It just kind of tweaked my desire for the brand and I wanted to add a piece. And then I just became low key sort of obsessed with it and was just, you know, researching all about the Kelly and the Birkin and all that sort of thing. Even though I knew about it, I just did lots more research into it and all the sizing and mod shots and all of that I kind of got from the purse forum. About mid-2016, I decided to pretty much sell the majority of my luxury bag collection to fund buying an Hermes Kelly bag. And I actually wanted a Birkin first. Truly, to be honest, I really wanted to get a, an Hermes Birkin, but um, in the resale market, like pre-loved, I should say, you know, pre-loved, because resale and pre-loved is a bit different, but I'll talk about that a bit later, I hope, I remember. Um, so, so the Birkin in the pre-loved market back in uh, mid, early to mid 2016 was at a very high peak. Like it was harder to get a Birkin for pre-loved under retail, unless you were going to go with a Birkin 35 and I wasn't going to do that. I'd already done my research, looked at mod shots and the size and read that the 35 felt quite heavy to people and that, you know, petite people like me probably would find the Birkin 35 overwhelming because I'm only five foot, five foot two, barely five foot two. Um, so I then decided, okay, well, perhaps I should go with the Kelly. I was going to be a mum. My daughter was going to be born at the end of that year. I was already pregnant when I was doing all my, um, like, starting to do some more hardcore research. So I ended up going with an Hermes Kelly 32 because I could find it pre-loved for a reasonable price, which was 7500 Australian. And at the time that was quite a lot of money, but I did sell all my luxury bags. But to me that was like, oh, so much money. And that's why I ended up settling for a Kelly because I thought I'm about to be a mum, the shoulder bag will be useful. And the Kelly 32 is cheaper than buying a Birkin 30. Much, much cheaper when you're buying a pre-loved vintage one. So it was a vintage Kelly 32 and I think it was a year 1999. So I ended up buying that in November 2016 um, and I kept it up until 
February 2017 or January 2017 thereabouts so obviously I did sell the bag and the reason that I sold it was because it comes down to the fact if you want if you want something more than something else then just keep on saving and go for the thing that you really really want like I said that I wanted a Birkin I would have preferred a Birkin 30 because it was just something that I really wanted it was like a bucket list sort of thing you know the Birkin was massive and it still is big now, but I'm seeing that there's more of a surge now in current days with the Kelly versus the Birkin. But yeah, before the Kelly was not as popular as the Birkin, like quite obviously not as popular. So I ended up selling the Kelly 32, which was in uh, Dennis. I ended up getting my money back, which was good. I ended up breaking even. I then began my search for a Birkin 30 and I knew pretty much what specs I wanted. Obviously Birkin 30, I wanted Togo and I wanted black and I wanted palladium hardware. So that's really what I hunted for. And I had decided in myself, I wasn't going to settle on anything else. It had to be that because that's what I wanted. And I didn't want to be back in the same situation that I was at before where I bought the Kelly 32 as a compromise, but I really wanted the Birkin. So that's what I was hunting for. And that's exactly what I found. It took me about, uh, I think maybe a month to find it. And I ended up buying from a consignment store in Japan called Yochika. And I paid 14,300 Australian dollars, which was over retail. From what I know, this is just kind of going off a rough kind of idea based on what sort of things have been said in the purse forum. I believe that the Birkin 30 price back in early 2017 was about 13,000. 500 maybe 13,700 around about that bracket between 13,5 and 14,000 but it was not more than 14,000 I know on the purse forum they have a list of current pricing but Australia is always forgotten like the people that shop Hermes in Australia don't really post much on the purse forum there's few Australian people that post on the purse forum well they are on there but they're just not going to the thread that has all the prices. But in the US, um, like US pricing, you can get a pretty clear overview of what the pricing is on the purse for it. Okay, enough of that. So yes, I got the Birkin 30 and it is exactly what I wanted. So I was very, very happy with it. And then um, I still had an itch for Hermes. Like at that point, I pretty much had barely any luxury bags left. Pretty much had the Birkin 30 and then maybe one or two other luxury bags. So I decided I was going to start shopping at the boutique. I thought, I love the brand. I love all the other bits and pieces that they have. Like I love the shoes. I love the SLGs. I love the jewelry. So if I want to buy these things, because at this point I already owned the Hermes Click Clack. My husband had bought it for me. I knew that the quality of their, like their fashion jewelry was really good. So I decided to start shopping at the boutique so I can get those things and obviously build rapport. So eventually I could get another dream bag. On my first visit to Hermes, I dropped my daughter off at my mum and dad's and went to the city and I met my sales associate that I was going to deal with because we just clicked straight away. Like on first visit to the store, I walked in and I felt intimidated. I remember feeling like a bit nervous in the way I spoke and I'm quite a confident person, but I feel like I could tell that I was nervous. Like to me, it was obvious. So I probably sounded like a nutter. But yeah, I met my sales associate who happened to be, um, she was in the silks department. That was her department. She worked in silks. So she, you know, did all the scarves and all the twillies and stuff like that. I knew I, what I wanted on the day. I wanted Oran sandals. And I think, I think that was essentially what I wanted. But I ended up buying a scarf as well and a Kelly double tour bracelet. Um, purely because I was nervous and I felt that, oh, if I spend maybe like two and a half, three thousand, maybe she'll just give me a bag on the day. But of course that didn't happen. So when I met my sales associate, I pretty much was talking to her about, oh yeah, like she seen my Birkin 30 because I brought it with me. And I said that, you know, I bought it from Japan from a consignment store and they can't really comment on anything else. I already knew it was authentic. So she's like, oh, that's, that looks good. Yeah, it looks like it's a really nice bag. That's like a Holy Grail bag, you know, Birkin 30 black palladium hardware. So obviously she wasn't going to go, oh, you bought it from like consignment store. She wasn't like that. She was really polite and she would just complimented the bag. Spending more than I planned on the day, but I did click with my sales associate and she was, she's the same age as me, about a little less than a year younger than me. And I ended up getting her business card. And pretty much from there, we developed a, you know, customer sales associate relationship. I would go to the store every month. I would talk to her on the phone, let her know what things I was after you know, send her emails and she would call me back because she just preferred that sort of phone call. At least every month I was going to the store. So my face was 
being known and she'd only been at the boutique prior for I think only around about five months before she met me so she was fairly still fairly new she was still building up her client base so she didn't have quite a lot of clients and then I remember in um, May I requested a Picoton 18 in Rose Azalee because that was the then color for um, I think it was like spring summer color to my surprise when I went to go visit in June um, to pick up I think my twillies yeah I had requested some um, specific twillies she surprised me and she said I've got something for you and then my heart started racing I was like <gasps> and I was like freaking out going what do you mean you got something for me and I knew that she had something like she had a dream bag for me guaranteed I knew it in my heart I could tell by the way that she was smiling at me I knew it and um, when we ran around to the other side of the the shop sort of like you know away from everyone and she unboxed a Rose Azalee Birkin 25 Swift with gold hardware and wow was I like not expecting like I was not expecting I was going to get a dream bag that soon. Let me correct myself. I actually believe I was shopping. I started in February. Yeah, I started in February 20, 2017 and I did already have an online history like shopping with the boutique, but all it was was the click pack. That was it. So that's only four months and I was offered a dream bag and I believe I had spent around about five and a half thousand. So it's no gauge to say that, oh, that's all you need to spend to get a bag because that's definitely not the case. And when I continue on with my rambling, you'll find out it's definitely not the case. In my opinion, when it comes to your first bag, I feel as though, in my opinion, it is much easier to get your first bag. And I think that's got a lot to do with Hermes wants to surprise you and give you that special feeling of getting your first dream bag. But after that, it's very different. So getting your first dream bag, it's kind of like, not to sound like bad against the brand, but it's like baiting you in because it's such a wonderful experience that, you know, to get this bag that is so hard to obtain. I'm not saying that they're doing it deliberately, but I feel like it's just what happens psychologically to you because you get your first bag and it's an overwhelming experience and it makes you want more and it makes you feel like it maybe isn't that hard to continue on your Hermes journey which isn't exactly the case it does it can be quite hard unfortunately so yes thankfully enough I didn't have to spend much to get my first bag but I was buying all the items that I did like and most of it was shoes um, yeah shoes silks, twillies, some fashion jewelry. Pretty much that was what I bought. I did not buy anything in that amount. I didn't buy a bag because leather goods, particularly bags, don't really have a commission for the sales associate. Like if there is a commission, it is very, very small and tiny. The percentage is tiny. Whereas all the other departments, like ready to wear is a high commission, home goods a high commission, fine jewelry is high commission, those ones, give you real brownie points with your sales associate. I believe it was in that same year, so 2017 June, I got offered the Birkin 25. I actually, before that, I bought a Kelly 28 trench from a, a reseller and they were called Lux Station. Um, they, they are a reseller because they do actually hop around the world to try and score Hermes bags to resell them. The Kelly 28 in Trench. I actually bought that in April of 2017. So that was before I scored the Birkin 25 because like I said, I wasn't expecting it. And I paid um, 16,500, which was over retail. What ended up happening was I sold the Kelly 28 Trench um, not long after, I think maybe four months later or something from when I bought it. Yeah, maybe about four months later, um, I sold the Kelly 8 20, 28 Trench. And the reason I sold it was because I'd scored the Birkin 25 and I kind of felt like I shouldn't have like that, like the Kelly 28 Trench and the Birkin 30 Black and the Birkin 25 Rose rose as a lead. I felt like it was overwhelming. At the time I also found that that bag was too um, like small for me which is really weird looking back on it now but it was because I was a mum and I needed to carry more things for my daughter so I found the bag too a um, bit too small for me so I did sell it for a loss. I think I sold it for about 15,000 Australian which is a loss of one and a half thousand but I did use the bag for about four months and when you think about it 
you have to spend more at the boutique to get a bag anyway. So you kind of have to rationalize it that way that even though you're paying more in the resale market, you get to pick what you want and you're not having to spend, you're not really spending more than what you would spend in the, in the boutique. One and a half thousand dollars in, in loss versus spending more than $5,000 in the boutique to get a bag. And yes, you can resell some of the things you buy in the boutique, but you're pretty much probably only gonna get 50% of the cost back. So think of it that way, do the maths, and you can see that buying resale isn't really all that bad, apart from the risks involved. But I do buy from reputable resellers and I always get my bags authenticated with Baba Baby. Now I'm much more confident in my, in my authenticating skills. So for an extra double check, I just get my bags now authenticated with real authentication because I can pretty much, I can tell a fake. Like from photos, I even get my friends sending me pictures and I can tell if the bag's fake or not. But that's just me. I would still always recommend to everyone get authenticated with Baba Baby. In September 2018 is when my sales associate that had got me my dream bag in June now told me she's leaving the company. So I was absolutely devastated. I was I was gutted. And to be completely honest with you, from when I got my dream bag in June up until September, I spent about $13,000 with her, including that included buying a mini Evelyn in that purchase as well. So I don't know why I did that. Like I went, I think I could, like I said to you, I feel like when you get your first bag, you get so overwhelmed with the experience and wanting more, like it, you crave more. And especially when you're so passionate about the brand, I just wasn't counting the money. And now I completely regret it. I totally 100% regret spending so much in such a short period of time. So July, August, September, three months. I don't know how I managed to spend that. Honest to God, I have no bloody idea. I don't know what I was doing. I think it's because I bought the mini Evelyn. It really bumps it up. But I think, yeah, I think it might actually, I think it might have been around about 10,000 or something. Ten to, but anyway, either way, it was way too much money and I completely, totally regret it and I want to kick myself because my sales associate ended up leaving. So I, she couldn't offer me another bag. She knew that I had spent a, quite a considerable amount with her, but she wasn't allowed to offer me another bag because it hadn't been at least close to six months since my last bag. The sales manager, like the store manager, sorry, wouldn't allow her to release me another bag. Plus in August and September, they have very few stock because that's the holiday in France. You know, Hermes staff definitely does it in um, between August and September, they have a whole month off. So they didn't really have much stock and she was leaving um, in the very beginning of October. So she couldn't help me out even if she wanted to anyway, because it hadn't even been close to six months since my last bag. And that's why I regret it so much because even though I bought a lot of things I loved, I feel like I could have stretched that out. Like I didn't have to buy everything so soon. I was just silly and um, completely ignorant, like not thinking to myself that my sales associate could leave. Like it's retail, you know, she's young. Of course she could leave. I didn't think about it. So I totally regret that. And I'm being completely transparent and honest with you. I'm giving you all prices in my experience. So I'm hoping that no one makes the same mistake as me. But then again, if you're made of money and you got lots of money and you're rich, then 13,000 is nothing to you. But me looking back, I am really peeved off with myself, super peeved off because that's pretty much the price of buying a bag. Like I could have added another 3000. I could have not got another bag. Like I'm chasing a bag, but I could have added another 3000 or so and bought one in the resale market. That's why I'm like, mm, whoa. let's not dwell on the past. Let's not dwell on the past. So pretty much around the time that my sales associate left, I bought a Kelly 32 in CL pre-love for about 7,000 Australian dollars because I wanted a bigger bag you know, being a mom and I thought the Kelly 28 was too small. So I bought that from a reputable consignment store called Your Authentic Seller. And the reason I say that they are a consignment store, even though they appear to be a reseller, is because he is not hopping around the world trying to chase bags to resell them for profit. He's actually reselling bags so that other people have probably hopped around the world and he is selling them on their behalf. So he takes a commission and they get the majority of the, pro like, you know, the, the sale and they get their profit, but he takes a commission for selling it on his platform, doing the, all the authentication, taking on the risks and shipping the item and whatnot. Now continuing on, my sales associate has left and I'm feeling ridiculously gutted. I've got the Kelly 32 in CL. I've got um, the Birkin 25 Rose as a Lee and I've got the Birkin 30 Black Togo. But I then decide to sell the bags and I believe this was at the end of 2017. Yeah, towards the end, very much so towards the end of 2017. 
I sell the Birkin 25 in Rose Azalee because it's quite a difficult situation because I was using the bag, but I was not feeling myself using the bag. I didn't feel like it was me because it was very bright Barbie pink and it was gold hardware as well. So I feel like it was extra flashy and it was a, a handheld bag. So I feel like when you're holding a bag handheld in the crook of your arm, it's very fancy dancy sort of vibe. So even though I was using the bag, it didn't resonate with me. So I decided to sell the bag for that reason, that it didn't resonate with my true style, my true identity. I did end up selling it for a profit, which was good. So that kind of in my mind recouped some of the, the um, you know, what I spent, sort of, you know. I think I made around about a $4,000 profit, but bear in mind, like I said, I spent $13,000 after the bag and didn't get another bag with that sales associate because she left. Not that it's her fault she left, but that was the situation. So in my mind, I kind of helped me feel a little bit better that I made some profit on the Birkin 25 Rose Azalee. And then I also decided to sell the Birkin 30. I sold it because again, it was a tote bag. It was a handheld bag. You could only put in the crookie arm, couldn't put on the shoulder. And I was finding it awfully difficult using that bag and pushing a really big pram because my daughter was still very young. I was pushing a really big pram and she wasn't really walking around or anything. So I found it quite awkward to use. So I decided to sell that too. So I sold both Birkins and all I had left was the Kelly 32 in CL. Then I ended up buying a Green Mouette Constance 24 from a seller called iBuilt. And she is part reseller, part consignment store. So she sells um, for other people, but she also does globe hop sometimes and um, resell bags that she scores. So she's half and half. And I paid a very hefty premium for that. A very, very hefty premium because Green Mouette was an extremely sought after color. It still is, but I think it's kind of fizzled down a bit because um, it's getting a run for its money with Gris Asphalt. I paid $17,050 for the Constance 24 and Gris Moet and it was pretty much like new, like the person that had it um, didn't really use it so it still had the hardware stickers on and yeah, that was a hefty premium. Looking back, I, I regret that because now I don't even have that bag anymore. Um, long story short, I found the Constance 24 in Epsom really annoying when you're a mum as a shoulder bag. Like I've wanted a shoulder bag for, for convenience being a mother and I found it annoying because Epsom doesn't hug your body. It's like this block, like this structured stiff block sitting on the side of you. And because the buckle is heavy, the bag kind of has its weight going forward. Like, so when it's on your shoulder, sometimes it would slip off your shoulder and that leather didn't hug your body, didn't mold your body. So after many and many uses, in situations where I was trying to carry my daughter in one arm, put my daughter in the car, all these things, it was peeing me off. It would fall off my shoulder, it would knock into things, and it started to drive me crazy. And then the buckle, lifting up the buckle, it was easy to scratch Epsom, so you would scratch the surface of Epsom. Plus, I just managed to scratch that bag in general. Don't know how, even though I was very careful and didn't even use it all that much. So, looking back, I regret it because I paid a very hefty premium. I think that the retail price on the Constance when I bought it in February 2018, I think it was about 14 and a half thousand, maybe 15,000. Actually, yeah, I think it was close to 15,000. So I paid two more than 2,000 over retail. Um, and then I now like been trying to sell it, haven't been able to sell it, so I've sent it off for consignment and I'm definitely gonna lose money on that. I'm probably going to lose about three and a half thousand dollars on selling that bag by a consignment store. Um, like I said, goes back to the fact that you don't know how much you have to spend in a boutique to get a bag. Like, when you pay premium in resale, it is best to try and stick at the very most um, $2,000 over retail price, at the very most, I recommend that but it's not always possible if you are looking for a highly sought after color. So yeah, not always the case that you can stick to that budget. Back to my journey with the store. So October, 2017, my sales associate has left and I moved on to a different sales associate. With my situation, with moving on to the new sales associate, we got along really well. A lot of things in common, we love dogs, very similar personality. 
But what ended up happening, she became quite busy with her new role. She got promoted to the national training manager for um, all the sales associates, for any new sales associate coming on board. She would do all the training. Still continued to shop with her even though she started to become increasingly busy. And over the time period from um, October 2017 up until uh, June 2018, I had spent with her four and a half thousand. So, and I still didn't get a bag. Nothing. Nothing. So I'm now at uh, 17500 and no second bag. This is more than the cost of another bag. And again, I'm kicking myself because if I had not spent anything, none of that, I could have just bought a, got another bag in the resale market. Even though, yes, I'm buying things that I like and that I'm using, still in my mind, it bothers me because you're buying what you like and what you love from the brand, but you still... Are chasing a bag as well because it goes hand in hand with your love for the brand there are very few people that shop at Hermes and spend that kind of money that aren't chasing a bag as well like a dream bag so I'm getting a bit annoyed by this point that time period I'm realizing I'm not getting another bag am I like it's not happening I'm having the worst of luck my sales associate has left the one I've now moved on to is becoming increasingly busy it's hard to reach her it's hard to get in touch with her on the phone she's like not as responsive to messages anymore and she's not really an email person either so I'm starting to get peeved so in that time period um, I've also then sold my Kelly 32 CL and I sold it to fashion file for buyout and I ended up getting my money back. I think I maybe lost $300, which is okay because I had sort of used it for about a few months or so. And from selling that um, and continuing to save some money and selling all the rest of my luxury bags. So at this point, I have absolutely no other branded bags. I then go ahead and buy a Kelly 25 in Rose Japur. Um, I bought it from someone selling it pre-loved and I paid 13 and a half thousand. So I've now got at this point, this is early 2018. I've got the Grimouet Constance and I've got the Kelly 25 Rose Shapur. It was in uh, July that I decided I needed to move on to a new sales associate. I think I hadn't even dealt with my second sales associate for like maybe two months or so. I think I hadn't dealt with her since February of 2018 because I was just getting annoyed with the whole situation. I think so, maybe even March. So I had about a few months break from shopping in the boutique and I then decided I needed to move on to another sales associate. I spoke around to some people that I'd met on the purse forum and someone had recommended to me um, a fantastic sales associate who happened to also be the store supervisor and it actually worked out well. So when I kind of phoned up to speak to her, I asked her if she recommended I should move on to anyone else because I understand she's um, you know, the, the second in charge to, to the store manager. And I explained my situation, you know, what I've kind of been through with my sales associate leaving and then my next one getting a promotion. She was happy to help me. She was really, really nice. So kind and fabulous. Um, I really like her and then my first sales associate, I dearly miss uh, because their personality was very down to earth. It didn't feel like you didn't feel like you were just another client with them. Like you felt like you made a friend. So um, my then third sales associate, I do dearly miss. Um, so obviously you can see the running trend here. I'm about to tell you that she's so that she leaves too. So with her from shopping with her in July all the way up until the end of 2018 till December, I spend with her uh, $4,000. So that now brings me to 20, about 21,000. I have rounded down some things. So my actual total is about 22,000, 21, 22,000 with the boutique from since I got my first Birkin 25. So this is not including my an original spend. This is now what I spent after that bag and not even including the cost of that bag. I'm now up to $22,000 and I spent 4,000 with my third sales associate. At this point, I'm pretty much nagging her a lot, but in a very nice way, because we get along as friends. We could have conversations for hours and I, even now I feel like I've lost a friend that's moved, like gone interstate sort of thing. She was fabulous. Um, she's got a promotion and she's now a store manager of another boutique of Hermes. And in the very final, her final month, she knew she was leaving. She's like, look, um, I have some sad news to tell you. I am leaving. Um, and at that point I said, please, can you please, please help me? It has been uh, a year, a, 
a year and a quarter, well, I'd say over a year since my last bag, and I have spent $22,000 with a boutique after that bag. And I, even though I'm buying the things I love, I'm getting annoyed because I'm buying the things I love, but of course I want a dream bag too. They go hand in hand. What I love buying at the boutique, I also love your dream bags, and I want that too. And I'm getting disheartened. I'm starting to feel um, upset with the brand. You know, like I put so much passion into it. Like I, I appreciate everything that they make. I buy a wide variety of things. I much, you know, pled, you know, my heart to her and begged her and. And um, she came through, thank God she came through. And I kind of feel bad that, you know, she probably hears this sob story from a lot of people, but I had to do it. I had to plead. I had to pour my heart out and say what I've been through, how much I've spent, how, how I'm starting to get really upset with the brand. So as you know, the bag that I did get, that my then sales associate, my third sales associate came through for me. She was able to get me this Birkin 30 Etoup Gold Hardware. And how she was able to justify getting me this bag was to essentially bargain with the store manager because it is a store manager's ultimate choice as to whether a sales associate can release a bag. Said to the store manager, I've been on the wait list since September 2017. It's now the end of 2018 and um, it's been over a year since she's got her first bag with us. Please have a look at her profile, review her profile as well. She, you know, is a regular customer, very loyal. And he gave her permission to release this bag to me and I'm very, very, very grateful to her. I, I'm saying I'm very grateful to her. Obviously, I'm grateful to the store manager for allowing, like, for her to give this to me, but I know that she put in a lot of the legwork and fought for me. Um, even though the Birkin 25, the first one I got, was very special to me, it, it didn't tick all my boxes because even though I wanted that colour, as a new mum, I felt like I was still finding my style all over again, whereas now, this is me to a T, 100%. I love neutrals, they're far easier for me to wear with my outfits especially because I'm always in a rush to get ready. And I like that, again, it's a Birkin 30. And I missed my Birkin 30 black when I sold it because it holds a lot. I purchased it in January 2019 and I do have an unboxing video on my channel. And the price was 16,320 Australian dollars for the Togo leather. In that video, I didn't say the price, but now this video is no holds bars. I'm Declaring everything, being completely honest. So we're going to rewind a little bit. So as you know, the Birkin 30 was offered to me in January of 2019, just this year, from my third sales associate. However, she was leaving. So she then said, I recommend that you pick the bag up with your new sales associate that you're going to be working with, which then became my fourth sales associate. So I'm going to rewind a little bit. And this bag... The Kelly 25 Gris Asphalt, I actually purchased in the resale market from a consignment store called JL, JL IG, so I'll put it down below. She is a consignment store and I bought this from her brand new, in, it's Swift Leather and it's in the exact size I wanted. I wanted a Kelly 25 and I actually do like Swift Leather. I already had Swift Leather. Um, so this I paid 16800 for. And this was in August of 2018, before I got my Birkin 30. And that would have been um, about 2,000 over retail. About that, maybe 2,000 or a little bit less. So it's around about the $2,000 mark. And it was just on that line where I kind of said to myself, I didn't want to pay more than 2,000 over retail. But for this, even if it was slightly more, I was okay with it because it was exactly what I wanted. And Gris Asphalt is a very desirable color. Neutrals always fetch a higher premium. I then decided to sell my Kelly 25 Rose Japur because I think the, yeah, the reason I sold it was mainly to do with the color and also the leather. However, I know that if you want to sell a Kelly 25, it's hard to not get Epsom. You're pretty much, your odds are you're going to end up with Epsom. So... It was to do mainly with the color, even though I don't really like Epsom leather. I don't like Epsom leather in structured bags like the Constance and the Kelly Cellier. So I sold the Kelly 25 Rose Japur. I ended up getting um, my money back on that, which was good. Um, I think maybe I lost 100, maybe that at the very most. So at the moment, I have two dream bags, the Kelly 25 in the Birkin 30 and I am still shopping with the boutique but I'm now up to um well 
I'm up to my fifth sales associate. So my fourth sales associate, I dealt with her from January up until currently now. Uh, well, actually up until April. I dealt with her from January to April and I spent with her $3,800. That's because I also had items that I needed to pick up with my Birkin 30s. Like three months and I spent under 4,000. That's a better track record that I had when I first was within that first year of shopping with Hermes. So I've now learned to pace myself to buy the things I love, but do it slowly. So at the moment, um, I'm now up to my fifth sales associate because that then fourth sales associate left. Like seriously, why does this keep happening to me? So I'm up to my fifth sales associate and my fifth sales associate, I feel like I have a, a really good relationship with because she has a lot of similar interests to me and she's gone through a lot of similar life experiences to me and she has kids and she's a few years older than me but I feel that like we relate on a very personal level. When I first met her, we could just chat for hours. At this point, I'm gonna start with her. I've only been seen her once and I have spent 2,000 with her. Just, just under 2,000 with her. Because there were some items that my fourth sales associate had put on hold for me and I was supposed to pick it up with her but then she wasn't available on a Sunday and at the moment I could only go into the boutique on Sundays. So it was better for me to go and meet my new sales associate, even though technically my fourth sales associate hasn't left yet. So I met her and I spent the, the like the commission would have went to her, which is good. Like that's what it, it's kind of better that way because the way that Hermes works, it, it's like a multitude of variables that lead you to the end result of getting a dream bag. And some of those variables include your relationship with your sales associate. Do you really click on a level beyond just customer sales associate? When you do have that kind of beyond level, that's a, that's a great thing. That's when you probably find you won't have to spend an arm and a leg, okay? Uh, the other variable is you do need to spend a certain amount to show loyalty and commitment to the brand. It is very hard to get a bag without spending money. Like. The only other way that you can get a bag with only spending maybe say a thousand dollars is if you go on the wait list and then you wait and you could be waiting a year or two years, three years, five years. It's an unknown when you're just waiting on a wait list bag. So that's the other variable. To get a bag outside of the wait list from your sales associate is you need to spend money. And there is no rule of thumb with how much you need to spend. It can be, like in my experience in the first bag, five and a half thousand. And then with the next bag, it was a lot of a lot of thousands, like too much money. But that was because I had a lot of bag luck with sales associates leaving. Generally, the rule of thumb from what I've gathered from other people, it's usually one to one or 70% to one. So 70% of the cost of a bag is what you usually need to spend to get offered a bag. Usually it's that minimum. And then up into one to one cost. But then in my situation, it was beyond that because of a lot of bad scenarios, a lot of bad luck. So those are your kind of your variables, but also within your variable of spending, you can't just be buying bags. You can't just say, oh, I'll buy a Picatin, I'll buy a Mini Evelyn, I'll buy, you know, bags, and then that'll get me to one-to-one. -to -one. That's not how it works. Because bags have a lower commission for your sales associate. So to get your kudos points, you really kind of need to be spending like, you either spend 70% on high commission items like your fine jewelry, your silks, your ready to wear, which includes your shoes and your clothing, those sorts of things. If you're spending 70% in purely that category, you're probably going to end up getting an offer of a bag if six months have gone by since your last bag. But this is that's not always the case as well. It depends on the person, like how long you've been shopping with the boutique and all those sorts of things. Sometimes it's they make you wait six months, sometimes you only need to make, wait three months sometimes i've heard of people only waiting two months but they've spent on very high commission items like fine jewelry pretty much exclusively so those are kind of a few variables and a little bit of my advice to you with how it kind of works when it comes to getting an hermes bag but it's not to a t like it's not exact what i'm saying but these are just some variables to get you a bag okay so like i said in my situation um I'm up to my fifth sales associate and I've spent 
3,800 with my fourth and now my fifth I've spent 2,000. So I am now at just under $6,000 spending with the boutique since my Birkin 30 offer. I've also bought in the meantime since my Birkin 30 a mini Evelyn uh, from the Italy store. So it's on my online record from, with the Italy store. It's gone in my name, but I don't think that that counts towards anything to do with the boutique locally. I believe it has absolutely nothing to do with it. It just, it goes, it goes towards your total profile, but it virtually means nothing because it's not a commission that your sales associate has got. However, your store manager, when it comes to a time when your sales associate um, puts forth a bag that they'd like to offer you and your store manager has to review your profile, I believe, I'm not 100% sure, that any international spend that you've had on your name should be visible by your store manager. I'm not 100% sure. At the time that I'm actually filming this video, I have another bag that's on its way. And obviously I wanna get a bag from the boutique eventually. Um, I'm hoping it comes around my birthday in August for my 31st birthday, but if not, if not, I'll be, I'm fine with that. As long as I haven't spent what I spent last time, you never know when a bag's gonna come. So my advice is, even though I'm completely pooped from filming my journey, my advice is when it comes to Hermes, find a sales associate that you click with. Try to avoid shopping online. Try to just shop with your sales associate. If you are gonna buy stuff online, that's fine. Like bags, because pretty much they don't have much commission to the sales associate, unless you're buying a Lindy, because they're very expensive in Australia. They're 11,000 for a Lindy 26. That will give a small commission to your sales associate. So anything in that kind of category, like that kind of price range for a bag, say if it's like 8,000, or 7,000 and upwards. Sorry, you can hear my daughter laughing. She's we're playing with my husband now. Um, so anything that's 7,000 Australian and upwards, I would recommend that you buy it with the boutique rather than buying it online, even if you have to wait that little bit longer. But things like a mini Evelyn, a Picoton, if it comes up online, just buy it online because they can be hard to get in the boutique. Um, pace yourself when it comes to shopping with Hermes. Don't do what I did and go completely ham, getting all hypo and crazy because you've got your first bag and you crave more. Just pace yourself. Try to sp spread out your wish list purchases because you never know when a bag's gonna come. It can come after you've spent a certain amount or it can come after a certain time has passed. So it could be that it just needs more time because if you're requesting that something that's highly sought after, highly sought after color and specs, it can be very hard to obtain and the VIPs are always going to get it first. The people that are spending like $100,000 a year or even people that are spending like, you know, $70,000, like $60,000 a year are going to be getting those offers more than you, more than someone who's spending like $30,000 a year or something like that or less. So it's that variable of spend and time. So that's my advice to you. Just pace yourself try to buy things that you love because if you do resell them chances are you're probably going to lose your money on it like with the bits and pieces that you buy from the boutique and don't be afraid to shop resale i like shopping with consignment stores pre-loved bags new bags i'm totally fine with that i've had the store experience even though i like getting a bag offer at store i'm not completely tied down to that. I don't only need my bags to come directly from an offer from my sales associate. I'm fine with buying resale and I try to stick to the rule of thumb of about 2000 Australian dollars over retail. I try to stick to that maximum. It's not always possible if you're looking for highly sought after sizes, Kelly 25, Birkin 25, neutrals. So maybe two and a half thousand at the very most if it's a highly sought after one because chances are you're going to get your money back anyway or you're barely going to lose anything if you've bought the right specs however with colors there are colors that do better than others and there are colors that don't do so well but that's a whole different conversation that i could go on about for ages and especially leathers and all those sorts of things so i hope that i've kind of summarized everything i hope that i've kind of given enough information in this video i know it's ridiculously long but i just wanted to share openly and honestly the bags i've bought the bags i've sold you know um sort of why i sold them i think i kind of touched on that i know that sometimes i kind of skipped over it a little bit but i think you can kind of get the gist of why they were sort of sold anyway and i hope that i've been honest with how much i've spent with the boutique 
the experience I've had with the boutique has been up and down, you know. Um, and I hope that I've kind of given you some advice when it comes to obtaining a dream bag. If you are chasing a Birkin or a Kelly or a Constance, I ho hope that I've given you some advice. But please don't think of it as, oh, I'm just going to buy these things from Hermes so I can get a bag. Chances are you probably aren't going to get that at your local boutique. You're not going to get a bag if that's just what you're doing. Unless you live in France where that's a common expectance to just spend and buy things to get a bag. But when it comes to local boutiques, like in the USA, in Canada, in Australia, you know, in Singapore, you should really just be buying what you love because they can kind of read if you're just shopping for the sake of it just to get a bag. So they kind of, you know, sales associates are a bit more intuitive to who is just trying to chase only a dream bag and not give a crap about anything else. So yes, if you have any questions, because I'm sure that I've probably missed some things or you maybe want me to elaborate on something a little bit further, please put them in the comments below or you can reach out to me on Instagram in direct message and ask me something. And yes, I hope that I've covered everything. <laughs> Anything that I may I kind of have missed or um, any links to um, some resellers that I've bought from, I will put it in the description below. I probably will film another video listing all the places that I recommend to buy Hermes from, like consignment stores, resale market, you know, external to the boutique. So that'll be in another video because I think this video is going to go on forever. And thank you very much for watching. I'm going to wrap it up now. You have a great day, everyone. Bye.